So what circle prospecting is, it's kind of like farming, but it's an opportunity for you to hopefully gain listings and buyers through people who already own homes. You know, commonly as real estate agents, we are going after people who are looking for homes or people looking to sell a home, but there's still opportunity in people who may not be looking for either. And that's what we do through circle prospecting. So if you can reference it to something, does anybody know what farming is? You want to tell us what farming is? Kind of like setting up your territory that you want to tap into mm -hmm. and be the expert in that area. Yeah, so typically people, um, for farming, we'll do things like mail out postcards or door knocking and things like that. Well, circle prospecting is pretty much the same thing except you're calling and we love calling. And so you are tapping into newer markets or maybe a market that you are farming or that you're trying to farm and basically taking them over. So um, what we're going to do is this is a circle prospecting script that we are going to go through and we're going to read it together and I'll just pick pick different one of you to read different um, sections of this but so you can understand how the whole circle prospecting thing works now with all scripts we don't necessarily read scripts word for word we like to make them our own but I'm one that believes in all scripts are kind of the same and so you know no matter what somebody else says there's still another question in that script you can ask them. There's another place you can take the conversation and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're gonna do and then we'll hop into some role playing on um, actually circle prospecting once we go through this script. So Thomas, why don't you start us off um, with reading the first part of it. Hey, this is Thomas. Uh, I'm calling today to survey the neighborhood and I was wondering if you could help me out. The market's hot right now and I've got some buyers looking in your area and they haven't been able to find the right home so I'm doing everything I can. I'm calling everybody in the neighborhood and I'm trying to find out uh, who you may know that might be thinking of making a move next year. Alright, George, you can pick it up from there. Can't think of anyone? That's okay. Thanks for thinking about that for me. Uh, just out of curiosity, when do you plan on making a move? And then, let's see. How long have you lived in the neighborhood? Where do you move from? Where Where do you move here? Where did you move here from? How did you happen to pick this area? So, if you were to make a move, where would you go next in the area, or would you go out of the area? Would you move into a bigger house or a smaller house? Awesome. So, does that sound familiar to y'all? Just like those those lines. So again, all these real estate scripts are kind of the same. It's just applied in different situations. So it started out referencing to you know who you may know and i have people looking to move in the area i'm not trying to list your place i'm not trying to make you move out but then as we move along it's these same lines that we use in the expired scripts it's the same ones that we use in the for sale by owners it's all the same so jay pick up after get everyone's email uh, so jason i really appreciate your time today once a month i send an email market update to some of my neighbors to help keep them informed on the neighborhoods uh, values and sales. As a homeowner in the neighborhood, would that info be helpful? Yes? Great. What's a good email I could send it to? Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the reports. Awesome. So, do you see what just happened there? You kind of put them into your database at that point. So, it's, it's saying again, like I'm not trying to list your house, I'm not trying to make you move, but I want to provide you with market updates and this and that. Once you've got that permission, then they're pretty much a farm area for you. So think about this on a large scale and I'll just use a, a condo building as an example. And the reason why I want to use it as an example is because it's easy. So just think about if you're calling every owner in a particular building. It's the same data, it's the same information that you're going to mail out. You're just getting their permission. And you're basically saying, I'm going to start farming you from now on and I'm gonna check back with you regularly to see if you know anybody and I have people looking to move into the building. In turn, making you an expert of that building. So the next page are criteria, and this can be used for anybody really. So they're good for you to definitely memorize to use for any conversation. So let's go ahead and pick up number one, Thomas. Um, 
when the motivation. What's got you thinking of making a move? Uh, we're moving for schools. Uh, oh, what, what will that do for you? Just read them all down. Yeah. <laughs> what will that do for you? What's important about that to you? Uh, tell me more about that. Awesome. George, let's pick it up. Motivation must be real and not just wanting to test the market. If price is a motivation, what price would, would motivate you to make a move? How much do you owe on the property and what will you be using to the what will you be using the proceeds from the sale for? Okay, so let's take a pause. Mm -hmm. So where it says if price is the motivation, mm -hmm. what kind of response from a seller or let's just take a for sale by owner or even an expired would give you the indication that price is the motivation? When they speak of money, I guess. Right, exactly. It's, it's any talk about money. So, um, you know, oh, the market's not where we want it to be because we can't net the you know, X amount of dollars or, oh, we need to be, we need to put X amount of dollars into it, you know, or we don't want to pay a commission, all those types of things. Anything that talks about money is going to be a price motivator. So where we say dig deeper, that's exactly what it is. It's digging deeper because they're going to give you a surface level money response, but where are you going to take it from there? You know, okay. So do those dig deeper questions make sense to you? Awesome. Jay, let's have you do the next section. Uh, if a different, bigger, smaller home is the motivation, dig deeper. Ask, what would your, what would your ideal home look like? Um, will you want to stay in this area? What do you like best about your current home? What do you like least about your current home? All right, so what's an example of a bigger, smaller home being the motivation? That you've probably heard on another call. Expecting a, a child and we kind of have grown this. We're going to need more room. Expecting a second child. A kid mm -hmm. leaving. Yeah. Yes. Empty nesters. Yep. We, and we get those responses all the time. You know, oh, my kid's going off to college. We don't need this much space. Or, um, oh, we're having a baby. We need more space. Like the, those are examples of, of those. So as, as we're going through these, just think about yourself actually on a call and somebody saying one of these and then immediately your brain should go to these dig deeper questions. Okay. All right. Next one, Thomas. When do you see yourself being ready to move? Uh, if unsure about the time frame, what time is frame is important? Are the circumstances that would enable you to move? To make this, are there circumstances that would enable you to move to make this happen sooner for you and your family? Are there circumstances that would prohibit you from making this move happen? Okay, what's the example of time frame? Before time the kids frame. go back to school, mm -hmm. before my new job starts, mm -hmm. or what about somebody saying, "Oh, we don't necessarily have a time frame. Mm -hmm. We could just do whenever." You know, people say that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we're not in a rush. That's still an example of a time frame type of situation. All right, next one, willing to meet. I'm assuming you're not already committed to another realtor, right? It's kind of that assumptive close, you know. Um, next, I'm gonna have my assistant send you our info in case you wanna talk sooner. That way you'll have it. What's the best email address that I can send that to? It's, it's, it's no pressure. It's, it's saying I'm not rushing you into anything today in case you wanna talk sooner. What's a good email address? And then seller directed follow up. I'd like to have an agent follow up with you when you're ready to talk more seriously about it. When will be the best time for that? Okay. Next, we have our objections. Okay. Now, these are things that you're going to hear pretty commonly when you're doing circle prospecting. So, you definitely want to memorize these for this type of situation. The first question, George, this is what you have. About. How did you get my number? You know, our technology team pulled this list together for me. Somehow your number was associated with this address through public records, so... Okay. Keep going. Okay. If they are upset, blank, I understand. I will remove your number right now and you won't receive another call from me. If they are just curious, continue to ask questions. What would be an example of someone being upset? Cussing you out. <laughs> Don't call me back again. Right. right. <laughs> you are ready for that or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or hanging up the phone on you. Hanging up the phone. Honestly, hanging up the phone to me isn't a situation of them being upset. It's a situation of me calling back and saying, oh, I think we got disconnected. 
and then you know I'll let them be upset <laughs> but hanging up the phone doesn't necessarily mean they're upset and then also the word no does not necessarily mean no it means what not yet not yet so if they're curious you know curious people will say things like oh what database or, or, oh, who else did you call? Or, you know, they'll just start asking questions because they are, they are curious. They just, they just wanna see how they can test you and stuff like that. Are you a licensed realtor? This will be replaced with yes, if it's you. Um, all right, Jay, I have an agent already. Um, have you signed a contract, contract with them? If no, great, I understand wanting to work with someone you're already familiar with. Just out of curiosity, would that relationship trump superior? Would that relationship trump superior track record and skill? If yes, get off the phone. <laughs> right. So I mean, and that's and that's true. Um, if somebody has an agent, the only thing you can do is not talk to them anymore. Yeah. But again, it comes down to there's a keyword in there. Have you signed a contract with them? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, you signed a contract five years ago for this property. Okay, you don't have another valid contract. When was the last time you signed a buyer's rep? When was the last? Was it six weeks ago or was it six years ago? You know, it's probably not still valid. Um, everybody has an agent. Okay, so you really have to ask people: Have you signed an agreement with them? Because if you ask anybody do they have an agent, they're gonna say yes. Because everybody knows an agent. Everybody's sisters, cousins, moms, family member is an agent. So you're always gonna, gonna hear yes on that. And most agents stop at that point. Oh, okay, well did you sign a contract recently? No, I haven't signed, okay. In, in your mind, they don't have an agent then, okay? Did you ask for their name? Like that agent's name. Yeah, and that's, and that's a great thing that I do, especially when I'm doing like expired and for sale by owners, I'll say, okay, what's your agent's name? I can just go ahead and send them the information that I have. And they're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Here's another video that you might find interesting. Go ahead and click on that and it'll take you straight to the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button below. It's just a circular picture with my face in it. So click on that and it'll subscribe you to my channel for more videos like these. Again, thank you for watching.